Good afternoon. Uh, today I want to just discuss the color wheel and how we apply the color wheel, why we need knowledge of the color wheel and why we need um, to know that we can create a gradient with different colors as we mix it. So the colors that I'm going to be using today is a lemon yellow, a cadmium red, a uh, a viridian green, uh, ultramarine blue, this is magenta, and then a uh, white color. Um, you can actually add to that your violet color as well. Let me just add to that violet. A little bit of violet because that will give you a, a very nice dark color. When we look at the color wheel, um, I'm going to be starting at the yellow. We've got three primary colors, which is your yellow, your red, and your blue. But you get different types of yellow. Here's uh, the lemon yellow, and this is more of a cadmium light yellow, and or medium yellow, and this is a bright red, uh, and this is more of the um, alizarin crimson yellow. And then you get blue, this is my ultramarine blue, but you also get cobalt blue, which is a lighter a lighter blue. Um, the colors that you get when you mix these two is the gradient then that, that forms uh, from the red to the blue, or from the yellow to the green, or from the red to the yellow. But there are some colors that you don't, uh, can't really mix, and that is magenta and violet. So I've got that extra on my palette. This is my magenta and this is my violet color. Um, because when you mix the blue and the red, it is it gives you more of a muddy, muddy color in that sense. So today we will look at how to make colors lighter and darker using the complementary colors. Complementary colors is the color directly opposite um, on, the, on the color wheel. So for red, it will be green. For yellow, it is purple. And for blue, it is orange. So um, when you, you can make your color either darker by adding black. So if this is your pure black or white, if this is your pure red color, then you can, by adding little bits of black to it, you can make a gradient, making it darker, or a value, or you can add a little bit of white to it, which gives you a gradient of a light, but it gives you a pink. So um, I'm going to be showing you how we are going to paint um, just a scene. This is my reference photo from a calendar that I got from a friend. So it is a, a scene of a, a sunrise with some flowers in the foreground. So in the background you've got a field with flowers but you can't see any detail. And that is what we're going to be focusing on, how to do a sky, just a gradient from a, a dark to a light and then the flowers um, using the same principle. Um, if you if you just do a line drawing of the same picture, it would look something like this. So it um, just to simplify it, I suggest you do something um, like just a simple line drawing of what you see. Uh, when you look at this, you will see uh, when we look at perspective that the lines that are furthest away are smaller together and as it come more to the front they become larger and right at the front you've got your focus area where you've got your biggest objects okay so i've got a, a prepared um, canvas here that i just uh, blocked in some colors but just to, to show you the, the process of how I mix and how I um, blend in my colors, I'm going to be showing you now. To create your darkest dark color of your sky, um, you take some of your blue, your ultramarine blue, and you mix some of the uh, violet color in there. It's actually better to use a palette knife, then you don't uh, waste so much. So you get your darkest 
color there and then to create a lighter color of a right to make it lighter as it comes down from the top of the sky towards the skyline you can add a little bit of blue to that which will I, I, I sprayed my palette with some water so it that's why it looks a bit uh, runny um, but you want the consistency quite fairly fairly thick um, so you can add a bit of blue to that to make it um, a lighter color when you paint it and then we can add white to that if I want to so you, that is your gradient now so you've got a, a dark a lighter and then a lightest um, excuse my dog snoring there in the background um, so if I want to make a, this pinkish shade then I would just add a bit of magenta to my darkest color or take some of my darkest color and add that to the magenta and then um, I'd like to add a little bit more of that more of the pinkish color there and then just add some of the white so you've got a nice gradient then there as well um, so your darkest color would still be your um, violet um, that is mixed with the um, blue. Okay, just looking for um, something to wipe my palette knife. There you go. Right, so now I've I dip my paintbrush in the water, and I um, you don't want you don't want your your water your paintbrush to be soaking wet, so you just um, wipe off most of the water and then what helps is that you can just wet the part where you're going to be working so I'm going to be working on this side and I'm just wetting it to help the the paint to, to glide in and just work much easier so I'm going to start with my darkest color and I'm going to be working it in over this color that I've already put in and it's a good idea to prepare your canvas before the time with um, you can really use any color to prepare it with but if you if you're going to uh, want to have like a nice warm colors for the with a sunrise then it's better to to use a warm color as your as your background color okay and now I'm going to be moving towards you can see there's a bit of the canvas sticking out so I'm going to just wet my paintbrush again and just work that in. So I'm going to be working towards the lighter color there. And then we're going to be just from side to side. You work it in like that. And then we can put in our lightest color. So now we've created a gradient of colors and you can go from the from the bottom, yeah, where my tree line is just kind of blocked in, you can work back up again and you can mix the colors while it's still wet, you can mix it in nicely like that. Uh, once the color is dry, there's a different method to use um, to mix in. If your color is like half wet, half dry, rather leave it to completely dry because if you try to go over an uh, area where the where it's still shiny, you can see it's not dry completely, um, it will take off that paint. So then you'll sit with a problem. So I'm just going to use my lightest color here again. Go in between my where my tree line is and then work my way up again. Okay. If I this area is going to be my lighter area, so I'm going to be using the magenta colors. I'm just cleaning my brush. So I'm going to start with I'm going to use a little bit of what is left of the blue, mix it with my violet. Because I do want a nice dark skyline. I didn't wet it. Now let me just grab another brush. 
and just put some water on it because I'm working with acrylics. And just yeah, and then um, you use your darkest dark color. Apply it to your canvas like this, and then you can blend it in with your other color. If you get to a place where your this color is dry and this color is wet, and you want to to blend it in. All you do is take a little bit of water on your on your brush, not too much, and then you just uh, bring that wet color into the drier area or where the where the paint is already dry. Okay, and then I'm going to be moving down with the magenta color because it's more of the pinkish color. As the sky and one thing about um, acrylic paint is it does dry darker than what you think <laughs> than what you put it on so it will um, definitely be darker so you can if you wanted a lighter shade than that then you definitely should put um, make it a lot lighter um, I'm going to leave this area yellow where, where my sun sun area so what I want to do now it's just put in very light colors like like uh, clouds almost coming in there if there's like a little bit of dark it's fine because it looks like the, the bottom part of, of your clouds and put that in there so that is basically the the basic technique of blending from dark to light now there are different ways to um, to make your colors brighter or to to make it more muted um, and the colors that are in the background will be colors that are more muted uh, I just want to show you um, because the, the the trees tree line is more um, it's just a silhouette so I'm going to use my thinner brush and I'm going to use my darkest color which is this um, magenta, a magenta, little bit of magenta, the violet and the blue that I'm mixing and then I'm going to just almost with one movement as long as I've got enough um, paint on my brush you can move it along like that uh, and, and it can look different for somebody um, in, in the art class the other day I made buildings it can be whatever you think should be in the background but the important thing is that it's got no detail it is just silhouette that you are seeing and uh, because uh, the trees normally grow in clusters so you'll have some high higher trees here and then a spot of you know not not anything growing much that's tall and then you'll have some higher trees there again maybe a different shape so um, it's just all one, one the same color. And so we do, when we talk about values, we say this is the basically the same value. You can't see shadows, lights. It's just a silhouette. Okay. And I'm just going to be using the last of it. Now, if you want to put in. Um, I'm going to leave this to dry but I will show you how to make the sun kind of pop out from be behind the trees so that will that will look very um, realistic and very nice so the the next part of the lesson is really how do I create perspective so to, to create perspective is to um, your background colors must be muted and your foreground colors must be bright so this is just the blocking in of, of what I want to do so if I want to use green I'm going to go back to my uh, my color wheel the opposite of green and like I showed you is two different this is the green that you get when you mix yellow and blue it's like a very dark green um, but you do get a viridian green which is a, a, a brighter green so it's up to you which one you choose to use but if you go opposite it's red um, uh, of green so if you mix in a little bit of red with your green you'll get a more muted color so that is what I'm going to do now 
I'm going to take my green and this is the, the Viridian green which is a, a very beautiful bright vibrant color which would be beautiful for the foreground but it would be way too too bright for the background so and I'm careful not to take too much because otherwise you end up with like a brown very ugly color so I'm just muting it a little bit and if you add a bit of white to that you can make it give it more of a, uh, the illusion of in the distance also because the further away the lighter something is also but because this this tree line has got a, a shadow underneath it I want to create a dark uh, brown or dark green so I'm going to be using this so this is red and green that I mixed and I'm going to be applying that I probably need a bit more of that first so that is my darkest color then this is my lighter color and then if I want to make it even lighter what makes green is blue and yellow so I can add yellow to this to make a lighter gradient or I can mix a bit of blue in with it to give it a more vibrant color and obviously when you paint you've got a, 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 land, a landscape you've got hills and valleys and so you can really play around with, with um, um, how dark or how light you want it so what's in the background will be muted and I'm going to use the the darkest color as like a shadow color for the for the tree line and it's it's really a thin very thin shadow because it's far away you can even when I paint what I what I do is I, I kind of take some of the shadow color and, and bring it into my my object whatever it is if it's the tree line or whatever that that actually uh, works quite well okay sorry about my dog snoring so happily away there um, makes me think of when I work night duty as a nurse and all the patients are snoring so nicely and you wish you could also go sleep okay so now my next color is the the lighter green color and it's going to be your stripes are going to be a little bit uh, thicker because it's closer together um, you can see in the background I've got uh, different colors and it it gives a very nice effect because when you look at a, a field You've got some patches that are where you can see the ground or you can see flowers sticking out so um, this will be a little bit of a thicker line this is very I'm very simplifying the the whole principle so it's basically what's closer to you is is bigger what's further away is um, is uh, smaller and darker and I'm going to use some of this uh, bluish color in there maybe there's a bit of a valley I love this this darker uh, green that I mixed with the blue I really do like this this one a lot I'll put it there create if you if you want to create a little bit of a hill you'll put your darkest color as it comes down and your lightest color as it at the top of it I'm going to be using this and then maybe add a bit of the, the lighter green I'm going to be mixing it in it's too as it is there that is too bright for a <clears throat> for a foreground so I'm going to be mixing some of my muted color into that and it even shows a bit brighter on the on the camera than, than what I have here Okay, and so your foreground that you have over here, this you can make nice and bright. I'm actually just going to mix all of that together and just fill in this 
this is really just blocking in. You can develop this further um, later on. I'm just washing my brush again. And so for your foreground color, I, I really like the, the green mixed with the yellow. So while this is still wet, I can mix in there again. Once it's dry, I'd rather use a, a clean patch because it will make like little crumbs and then it's very, uh, as the paint dries, because acrylic paint is actually plastic and it will be very difficult to, um, to get that out. So, this big, biggest area in the front here, this is then my focus area. And I can add more yellow to that. I love this color, it's really nice. Here's a hair. I'm just gonna pick it up with your if you with your brush. Okay, and then you this is really, like I said, it's just blocking in your, your areas. You're going to be developing it um, more later on. Acrylic paint, when it dries, like you can see what I've put here, it already looks, it's like it gets sucked into the canvas. So it's, there's no detail in that. So this was just blocking in where I want to put my flowers. So uh, because my skyline, these uh, trees in my skyline is dry, going to show you how to just uh, do the the in between where the sun is coming through I'm going to be using a smaller brush um, this is a size 6 flat a 6 flat and for that I'm going to be using my lemon yellow and I'm looking for a little space on my palette to mix it I'll mix it there lemon yellow with a bit of white because that is your lightest light that you're going to be seeing on your skyline. I've already put in, what you see there is just lemon yellow. And where the sun is kind of there, it is also lighter. So then you go in between your, in between your uh, trees and you just bring that color back in. I'm going to use it, my, no, there's too much other paint on there. And just smooth it in, just blend it in there. So that is your, your in-between colors. And it, it really creates, especially here around where the sun is, it really creates a, a nice glow when you do this. And uh, the, the same principle applies when you, when you mix your uh, red, for instance, and you want to mute it, you will add a little bit of green. And then you can add white if it's in the distance to make it look more um, of a faded color. There you go, I love it, because this side is going to be more, more of a light blue. Um, I want to... Take away some of the trees, yeah, and just just for some interest, so that it doesn't all look the same. And then blend it in with a little bit of water. Just put some water on my brush, and then so this is mixing the wet paint onto the dry board. There you go. This one will be a little bit more of the actual blue color. There you go. Um, all right, so now when you do your flowers in the front, um, if you want to use purple or a bright red, I suggest you take your white and then block in your, your, your colors first. If this is dry, it looks like it's dry over here. Um, because otherwise, trying to get a vibrant color of red or purple over green is not easy. and I'm just roughly blocking it in. Um, it's always important to do your flowers in clusters 
and it works best if you do it in unequal numbers like five or three uh, for some reason that that really works well um, I try to also create a form with with my flowers in the front not only the the flowers but I'm thinking of the background so this forms a V and that forms a triangle and that gives you very uh, a lot of interest in your in your painting so I might put some small ones there as well there you go so that is the idea that's just the principle of what I'm doing okay so um, now if you look at uh, the background we are we, if, if these flowers in the front obviously these there will be flowers in the back as well but you won't see it as flowers you will only see it as lines and the lines will not be as bright as the front so I'm going to take my red where I've mixed a little bit of green in with it so it's already a darker color and I'm just going to take my brush sideways and just pull it across uh, can be a little bit of a hill there so it's not very straight and the the closer it gets to you the more you can the thicker you can make your line you can put in a little bit there can you see how pretty it looks with the, the red and the green because they are also complementary colors and the purple and the yellow because that's complementary colors that looks really good now as it comes closer I can maybe put in a bit of this magenta color that I've mixed um, where you will see maybe where the sun catches it so you're already starting to see a little bit of detail um, and then on my flowers that I've got here uh, you don't see much detail but you can um, then in the same uh, with the same principle, say if I want to make red flowers, I will use I'm just trying to see on my palette if you can see, I'm going to move it a little bit up because I just want to focus on the flowers here yeah? if I want to make red flowers, my darkest color would be the red I'm going to put it down there and then if I want to lighten it, instead of putting white with it, I can add a little bit of yellow so it's like an orange color and then if I want to create a lighter color I can add a bit of white to that so that will be then my gradient of colors in my in my flowers so I'm just going to demonstrate over here so this is my darkest color and these 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 flowers will be smaller than my front flowers so these are like little clusters of flowers together but you might see the sun catching that so you you will see some shadow and you will see some light catching on that but you won't see individual petals like you will oh yeah I'm just waiting for this one to get dry let's do one yeah this one I've put in you can see where, it, where it's just on the green it's really not uh, it doesn't show off nicely Okay, and then I'm going to rinse my brush. I go to my lighter color, which is the orangey, red orangey color, peachy color, and then I put some in between there just to create uh, the illusion of um, detail. And it's all just illusion, it's not, it's not real flowers that I'm putting in individually and then on top I can put some of the very light color just touch it here and there and that is your your gradient that you create then for your flowers and so that's where the sun catches maybe some of the front flowers will have you can see little clusters there and if the paint mixes on your brush like that it actually gives a very beautiful effect you can see there the different colors that shows off when you do that and that is basically what I wanted to teach you so you when you look at your color wheel you can use different colors to mix um, your basic colors 
but to uh, when you work with colors in the distance you will work with more muted colors I can I will even put in some some of the magenta in here what you have in the sky it will be good to put put a little bit of that in the bottom as well because it reflects it just gives it some balance so I'll put some of the magenta in um, We'll go a little bit thicker lines there and that is that is your idea that you want to do and you can play around with your colors mix a little bit of colors together and see what you get um, if you for instance if you mix red and magenta together let's see what we get I'm going to just play here on the my way my color wheel is let's say if we take some red And we take some magenta and make, make a chart for yourself where you can say, okay, this plus this gives you this. So I'm just going to do it like this. I'm mixing this together. So I love this color. It's, it, it's like a deeper red. Um, so I, I really love it. And what now, what will happen if I add a bit of uh, violet to that. I take some violet. So then on your chart you will just say plus violet. And we add a bit of violet. Let's see. That's, look at that pretty color. That's really, really nice. I love that. So play around a little, see see what will make your color lighter, what will make it darker. You will find that some colors just makes a, a brown, which is just thing. oh, okay. I've learned now that these colors don't go together. So that is, that is what I wanted to teach you today. And I hope you have fun doing your um, landscape. And remember this picture that I've that I have now made is this is not the finish finished product. I will still um, be working on it. I will putting in detail in the flowers in the front. So uh, painting is a process, and um, if you feel you've made a mistake, you can always just go over it again. You can uh, paint over it again. You don't have to be stressed about it. I'm gonna turn it. This way, maybe I don't know if the if the camera is giving it uh, the right way around, but just so that you can see it from both sides. There you go. Thank you very much for watching, and um, see you next lesson. Bye bye.